Hey everybody, welcome to FSI DFS, another week of previews here, uh, looking at the four game slate for Monday, a uh, pretty big favorite in terms of Florida at home against uh, Columbus at minus 235, and we got an over-under of seven on the game with this Edmonton-Vancouver game, part three of this matchup so far this season. But before we dive in, please hit that subscribe button, and if you want to come and join us in our Discord channel, we do have subscriptions available at FSIDFS.com. We have daily, weekly, and monthly packages. Packages. We'd love to have you. If you want to try it out for just a day, uh, use the coupon code POWERPLAY and you can get free access for just a day. Test it out, see how you like it, uh, and yeah, go on from there. So let's dive in. Kind of already talked about the big favorite on the board is going to be Florida at minus 235. Uh, everybody else pretty even for the most part. A big over-under of seven in the Edmonton Vancouver. Vancouver is up 2-0 in the season series here. Um, first two games of the season for them. And then uh, Boston at Dallas, a very low 5.5 over under. You don't see too many of those. Uh, I think this might be number four or five so far this season. Hasn't been a lot, uh, but these are two juggernaut uh, defenses going head to head. So it should be a very intriguing game just from a uh, NHL viewing standpoint. In terms of projected goalkeepers, again, these are just projected goalkeepers. Uh, I believe Bobrovsky might be the only one who's confirmed at the time of the uh, I am recording this video. Uh, looking down here towards Edmonton and Skinner, really rough save percentage, arguably the worst goalie uh, so far this season. If it's not Skinner, it's probably going to be Campbell in net for Edmonton, and honestly, he's even worse than Skinner. Uh, so Edmonton's goaltenders are just having a really tough time overall so far this season, meaning uh, Vancouver could be quite popular. So I was a little bit uh, intrigued to see that Vancouver was a slight, slight, slight underdog here uh, at home. But I mean, if, if you're eliminating what's happened so far this season and kind of going into preseason expectations, yeah, Edmonton should be a favorite. Um, Edmonton's certainly playing way underneath uh, where they should be with all their talent. And Vancouver, I would say, is, is arguably uh, a little bit or a bit above uh, where they've been going and kind of getting bailed out by some insane goaltending by Thatcher Demko. So looking towards the line stacks, uh, I'm going to start off with this top line for Vancouver. Now I put Elias Pettersson at center, Quinn Hughes on the defense, and then you could go with Mikheyev or Kuzmenko, whichever side you uh, really prefer with their prices there. Kuzmenko, he does skate on that top power play unit with Patterson and with Hughes and guys like JT Miller that you see over here as well. Uh, Mikheyev, he's going to be skating on that second power play unit. And I really think that this Vancouver power play unit is going to be important. If you look down here towards the notable special teams, you can see that Vancouver's power play is running at a 30% uh, clip, which is fourth best in the entire league. They're facing off against the fourth worst penalty kill so far uh, this season in Edmonton. So I do think that the power play is going to come certainly into play more so into this game than it would in a game like Boston and Dallas. Uh, so yeah, so Kuzmenko does skate with Pedersen and Quinn Hughes on that power play. So maybe you get some correlation there. Uh, again, I already kind of mentioned it. This is the third matchup so far between these two teams. Vancouver, they're 2-0. They scored eight goals in that season opening game, and then they scored four goals in the game after that. And this is actually the highest scoring offense in terms of goals per game in the entire league. Uh, Vancouver's been doing very well, and they're going up against a struggling uh, Edmonton defense. Pedersen and Hughes really been leading the way, essentially. Uh, Quinn Hughes has been absolutely fantastic so far uh, in terms of offensive defenseman like if you're comparing Qu Quinn Hughes's salary at 6.1k to the 6.1k wingers that we have available I almost prefer Quinn Hughes honestly like he, his offense per, offensive production has been that good and he just sees so much ice time uh, I, I think I want to put him in this line stack if you are going to be correlating then I want a little bit different. Um, I guess it's not too different. Like it is the biggest money line favorite on the board in Florida, but I'm going down to their second line. I'm getting off that top line of Reinhardt, Barkov, and uh, Evan Rodriguez. Nothing wrong with them. If you do want to go with them, absolutely go for it. Love it. Uh, but I am going to go. I think that these guys are just going to see maybe a little bit less ownership. Uh, but for Hagee, Lindell, and Kachuk. They don't have great power play correlation. Kachuk does skate on that top power play unit with that top line uh, that I mentioned earlier. And then for Hagee and Lindell do skate on that second power play unit. I want to talk about Matthew Kachuk here real quick. He ranks sixth in the entire league in terms of expected goals per 60 so far this season. Uh, but he's... 
he's really not been lucky and the the bounces have not been going his way. He's faced some really hot goaltending as well because he also leads the league in terms of goals below expected, uh, meaning that like his expected goal, I can't remember the exact numbers, but like his expected goal total is like nine and he's only scored four uh it's something like that so he is you know he's due for some positive regression on the stat sheet in terms of like scoring uh so i really do like him there and we've seen his salary decrease ever so slightly uh because of that lundell his shooting volume he's really ballooned in the past three games i think he's hit the shot bonus twice in those past three but i do want to say here that that's not a guarantee by any means to be consistent moving forward lundell just historically throughout his career is not much of a you know i'm gonna shoot the puck like crazy uh so he does come in with a little bit of a lower floor, but maybe the coaching staff have told him, you know, like, go ahead, be feel free to shoot the puck, get it on net, uh, try to get Kachuk going here on the wing, get him on the score sheet, all that kind of stuff. So I like that there. And then for Hagee, it's just a great floor play in terms of his shot volume that he generates. So I think he could be quite popular at 5.5k just because of that uh, floor that he does bring. Going over to the individual plays, and again, these are not all the individual plays that I am interested in. I'm interested in quite a bit more, uh, but I don't want to. I don't want to give them all away. Come join us in our Discord. We'd love to have you. Love to have you. Uh, but we'll go with Matthews at 9.6k. And quick aside here. Connor McDavid is not center eligible on this slate for DraftKings. Not sure exactly why, because he's still uh, centering uh, Dreisaitl and Hyman on that top line. Uh, but still, he's over towards the wing, which is kind of intriguing. Uh, but Matthews, 9.6K for Toronto. Toronto's played five games at home so far this season. Matthews has a hat trick in three of them, which is just silly to even think about uh, what he's been doing. He's also generally averaging uh, six shots on net in those home games. Tampa Bay, they bleed shots against. They're, I think they allow the second most shots against per game in the entire league right uh, in front of San Jose. So Matthews, I would not surprise me one bit. It would honestly surprise me more if he does not get the shot on goal bonus uh, in this game. And 9.6K has seen a slight bump down. So I do like him at that price tag. JT Miller, 6.6. Uh, he would be a guy that you'd be pairing with Pedersen and Quinn Hughes uh, if you do think that that Vancouver power play is really going to be coming into play in this game. Uh, Miller does skate on that second line for Vancouver, so he's not going to be skating with Patterson, McKeever, Kuzmenko uh, at even strength. But there's the possibility that Miller and Quinn Hughes on defense could be lining up at even strength. Barkov, top line center for Florida, 6.2. Uh, top line center, top power play unit, biggest money line favorite on the board at home. 6.2K seems a little bit too cheap. Uh, I think that he's certainly going to have a ceiling game that's going to smash uh, what that price tag is. And then Fantilli, we just went a little bit cheaper uh, at center position. I, Roslovic over here as well. Uh, both these guys have really been solid value plays uh, for Columbus. If I had to choose between either of them, I'd much rather lean towards Roslovic here. Roslovic does skate on that top line for Columbus. He also skates on the top power play unit. And really getting any skater, forward, wing, defense, top line power play and top line uh, at even strength is certainly somebody that you're going to have some intrigue with. Uh, so if I do have to choose either of the two, I would be going with Roslovic. Alex Nylander, 8K, uh, a top wing or winger that I'm interested in here um, in terms of this video. Uh, but Nylander has a point in every single game so far this season. I think he's at 11 or 12 uh, games to start the year. He's actually set the Toronto Maple Leafs record for most uh, longest point streak to start off a season. And he brings you uh, a great, great shot floor as well. And like I said, Tampa Bay bleeds uh, shots against. Nylander does not skate on the same line as uh, Austin Matthews. I do want to point that out, though, but he does skate on that top power play unit with Austin Matthews. Uh, but Nylander is going to be skating with uh, John Tavares as his center. Brock Besser, 6.3K. He's the other guy that you could be pairing with uh, JT Miller. They're going to be skating on that second line. Uh, but Bosser, Brock Besser also does get top power play unit time with Pedersen, with Quinn Hughes, and with Kuzmenko. So it's the Kuzmenko, Pedersen, Hughes, Miller, Bosser. That's your top Vancouver power play unit. And like I said, I think it could really come into play with how bad the Edmonton penalty kill excuse me, has been so far this season. 
And then we're going to go with Robertson at 6.1K. This is more of a gut play uh, than anything. I know it's the lowest total. It's really not going to see a lot of ownership at all. Um, and I don't think power play units are really going to come into play here. You can see on the notes, I have Boston and Dallas. They're actually ranked one and two so far this season in terms of the best penalty kill units. But still, Robertson, I know it hasn't been a great season. I'm not ready to let it go yet for him. He has seen his salary decrease over 2,000. Uh, this was one of the best offensive you know, DFS producers in the entire league uh, last season outside of McDavid and Dreisaitl and the silliness that they bring over there. Uh, but 6.1K, I just never thought I would see the day that Robertson uh, would get this cheap. Uh, so I'm going to have a little bit of intrigue there just because, I mean, Boston's got to slow down at some point. I know they're, what, 10-0-1 so far this season or something crazy like that. It's got to slow down at some point. They're just, it's, it's unsustainable. And then going over to the defense, uh, I got two actually Edmonton defenders here. Bouchard, he does skate on that top power play unit. And it's a solid power play unit, 10th uh, ten, tenth in the league. I also, I also say like it's a solid power play unit. It could be either, either the top power play unit or the second power play unit scoring. But regardless, the power play unit on special teams as a whole for Edmonton, top 10, Vancouver, bottom half of the league. But Bouchard, he's going to be skating in that top unit with uh, Dreisaitl, with uh, McDavid and Hyman. Can't think of the fifth guy at this moment. I want to say maybe Nugent Hopkins? Maybe. Uh, but you can always, always check like daily face off or left wing lock. Those sites are always going to have that kind of information. But Bouchard, he's fantastic in terms of floor points, in terms of shots generated and block shots. He, he's going to do well and pay off his salary sometimes just off of that but he also gets that goal and assist upside which he's shown time and time again this season that he is capable of nurse he's very similar in terms of like he's going to give you a great shot floor and a block shot floor as well uh there's just not as much upside in terms of getting a goal or an assist with him which is why his uh salary is a bit lower Morgan Riley uh, here for Toronto. He skates on that second power play unit, so he's not skating with Matthews and Nylander on that top power play unit. That would be uh, Klingberg. Uh, but still, Riley at 4.0K, he has actually been the better uh, producer in terms of DFS points, in terms of all the peripherals, putting it all together. Uh, and he's just also eating monster minutes. He is seeing like 25 plus minutes of ice time, which is insane. Uh, and like I said, Tampa Bay, they've been bleeding shots. They're their goaltending's been, been solid so far. I will say that. 916 is nothing to scoff at, uh, but I think it's going to come back to bite them at some point here. Uh, and I do think that Toronto could come 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 out uh, flying in this game. And then OEL, we're just going with the uh, top power play unit defenseman for cheap uh, for the top money line favorite in Florida. So that's kind of where this slate breaks down. Pretty straightforward, all things considered. I think there's going to be a lot of action in the Florida, Toronto, and then both sides of this uh, Vancouver game. And then really not much of anything in terms of Boston and Dallas. But maybe Tampa Bay could be a very intriguing GPP play as well, just because Toronto, like, Toronto plays those high-scoring games. Like, they just played Buffalo. I just watched their play style and everything. And it's been what it's been for the past couple years. Like, they gather possession in the defensive zone, and then their forwards are just gone. Like, it, it doesn't even matter that, like, they might have just gained possession. They might be battling for possession, and the forwards are already out of the defensive zone, uh, trying to move it up forward. So it really creates a lot of odd man rushes going the other way. Uh, so maybe Tampa Bay could be an intriguing GPP play in terms of that. So thanks for watching, as always. Uh, good luck in your contests, uh, and we will see you in tomorrow's video for a nice big, I think it's, I want to say, 12-game slate for Tuesday. So thanks for watching, and good luck.